an YouTube phenomenon, a spiritual guru who's garnered tens of millions of views on YouTube because he has this innate ability to mix wit and humor to convey life-changing philosophical messages. He's a disciple of uh, Radhanath Swamiji and he resides uh, of ISKCON Mumbai. Who am I speaking about? Ladies and gentlemen, our pleasure to invite His Holiness, Lord Gopal Prabhu. Mukam karoti vacha lampang hum langhe te girim yat kripa tamaham vande shri gurum di natarna shri chaitanya shwaram paramanand matham. It is my great honor and pleasure, privilege to be amongst all of you here this evening. Oh, this afternoon, I'm still in Germany. And uh, my sincerest gratitude extends to Colonel David, Shimanti Renukaji, and the whole Radiant Group for having invited me over for this uh, wellness conclave and to be with all of you to share a couple of thoughts this afternoon. The subject matter I was asked to speak on is spiritual wellness. I travel a lot and I see that every country has a USP, a unique selling proposition. When we talk about the United States of America, it has a USP, liberty, freedom, comfort for the citizens. When we talk about the United Kingdom, it has a USP, royalty, the supremacy of the queen. When we travel to Japan, Japan has a USP, technology. You travel to the Middle East, Middle East has a USP, oil. And when we talk about India, India also has a USP, a unique selling proposition, something that all of us are known for. Sometimes they say, how do you recognize an Indian? An Indian is known by a man or a lady who will use the shampoo till the last bit by putting water to the bottle. How do you recognize an Indian? You would know an Indian by a man or a lady who will use the balan, the rolling pin, to squeeze the last bit of the toothpaste out of the toothpaste. How do you recognize an Indian? An uh, Indian is a person who gives another person a missed call. That culture doesn't exist in the world. There's nothing like a missed call in the world, by the way, ladies and gentlemen. How do you know an Indian? You would know an Indian by a person who will use a t-shirt till there's a hole in it. And once it's used, unusable in the day because there's a hole in it, you would probably start using it in the night. And if it's still not usable in the night any longer, you keep it for holy. And if it's not even usable for holy, then you use that pocha. <laughs> then you know, for sure you know then, that you are truly an Indian. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, we are known for our sparing nature. No wonder a lot of people in this world are super wealthy, in this country are super wealthy. Uh, India is known for Bollywood, India is known for its cricket, India is known for its beautiful architecture, magnificent edifices, India is known for its Himalayas, India is known for its literary contributions, India is known to be a developing economy now, indeed India is known for many, many things. But what India is specially known for on this planet Earth is its unique contribution in the field of spirituality. <laughs> Wherever I travel in the world, I see people glorifying, talking about, eulogizing the principle of spirituality that comes from this great land, Bharat Bhumi. People from America, people from Europe, people from different parts of the world come to India to see the beauty of India. But if you go to Rishikesh, you go to the Himalayas, there's a lot of people out there who are coming here to learn spirituality, who are coming here to learn yoga, who are coming here to learn the inner engineering, the inner ecology of life. Of course, when we talk about wellness, how can we neglect the principle of spiritual wellness? 
This afternoon, I thought I would share with you an analogy that one of my spiritual mentors, His Holiness Sachinandan Swami, who's a German by birth, once told me. It's a beautiful analogy. It's called the tree of life. Whenever we look at a beautiful tree, one of the most essential parts of the tree is its roots. A tree has three aspects to it, essentially. One is the roots, the second is the trunk, and third is the crown of the tree. And when we talk about the roots, a healthy tree has healthy roots. The deeper the roots, the stronger the roots, the tree stands strong in storms, cyclones, hurricanes, and tornadoes. And the roots are not seen to our eyes. Ladies and gentlemen, those roots are compared to our spirituality. Our achievements are seen to people, our gadgets are seen to people, our money is seen to people, our accolades are seen to people, our charisma is seen to people, our success is seen to people. What's not seen to the eyes of the people is our roots, our spiritual development. And therefore I always say, if we do not work on what is unseen, it's very difficult to sustain what is seen. One of my friends in Mumbai, he purchased a very slick Lamborghini. He's a wealthy guy. He purchased a very slick, posh yellow Lamborghini. He's a Gujarati. So he called me from the showroom and he said to me, Swamiji, Hindi mein bole wo. Swamiji, aap pagla karenge? I said to him, bhai, dunya pagli hai. Ab aur kishko pagla karenge? He said, nahi, nahi. In Gujarati, pagla means, will you kindly touch your feet to my car? Pagla. Ghar ka pagla karenge, gaadi ka pagla karenge, office ka pagla karenge, which basically meant, will you bless my car? I said to him, bhai, Lamborghini hai. Kyo nahi karenge pagla? Sadhu unko kab Lamborghini ka pagla karne? I said, please come along, you know. <laughs> the gentleman drove to where I lived. And he said to me, well, uh, we'll go for about a 15 minutes drive. I said, fair, let's go. We started off. As we were driving, I was in the passenger seat, the guy in the driver's seat. The car halted at a traffic light. And there was another guy right next. He kind of turned around and he saw this slick yellow posh Lamborghini in Mumbai, a rare sight to see, and his eyes went big. Wow! And straight after, he looked inside the car and he saw me and his eyes went bigger. <laughs> and he had this expression on his face, Kya Swamiji, aap bhi? <laughs> I wanted to pull the window off and said, Mere bhai, ye meri gaadi nahi, mein pagla tha jo pagla karne hai <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's not my car, man. <laughs> The 15 minutes drive had turned into 25, 35 rather. At the end of 35 minutes, I said to him, look, I need to get back because I need to attend a meeting. Can I, can we drive back? What this man did shocked me to the core. Probably will shock you to the core. This man started crying like a baby. These weren't tears of joy. These, these were tears of anguish and pain. You know how to detect tears of joy and sorrow? You just use your thermometer to check maybe. Because tears of joy are cold and tears of anguish are warm. Of course, next time anyone cries, don't take a thermometer saying, are you happy or are you sad? <laughs> I asked him to park the car near the sidewalk. I said to him, what happened? With great difficulty he spoke and he said, just three days back, my wife, has filed papers for divorce. I love her. My children love her. She's one of the best mothers that one can ever have. And we don't want to miss her. We've tried everything possible. It just doesn't work. Of course, I tried to console him, pacify him. And then I was thinking to myself, the world sees his Lamborghini. The world sees his success, the world sees his bank balance, the world sees his popularity, the world sees all of these things, and I sit with the who's who in the country. And when they confide with me, 
I see what's happening inside. Ladies and gentlemen, yes, the trunk of the tree is visible to our eyes. Ladies and gentlemen, yes, the crown of the tree is visible to our eyes, but the roots of the tree, which are underneath the soil, which are invisible to our eyes, is our inner development, our spiritual development. And unless we make that spiritual development and our spiritual growth strong, the storms, the hurricanes, the cyclones of life do get over to us and bog us down, pull us down in life. Therefore, I say, some people are just so poor, so poor, so absolutely poor that all they have is money. And thus I say, if you want to know how rich you are, then count all those things you have that money cannot buy. I'm not saying money is bad. I'm not saying we shouldn't have money. I'm just saying that we can't connect that as the be-all and the end-all of life. Krishnamurti ji, thank you for your financial ad advice. <laughs> and I'm sure that advice must be taken very seriously in order to really keep it going and life going. At the same time, we also need to look at the roots. And that's why I say the roots, strengthening the roots happens by connection. Connection to our own selves. Connection to divinity. That's why meditation, yoga, chanting, prayer is gaining such popularity all over the world because everyone says that the unseen roots need to be strengthened so that the tree is strong. And when those roots are strong, the second aspect, which is the trunk of the tree, the trunk of the tree is our physical and our emotional well-being. That's the trunk. And a trunk can stand strong and a trunk can stand stable only if the roots are deep and strong. If the roots aren't deep and strong, the trunk is dodgy and wobbly. A, hu a hurricane or a cyclone can shake it, sometimes even uproot it from the very core. I remember very well, in the year 2009, 18, I believe it was the 9th of July, I received a phone call from my mom, half one in the morning, and she was crying on the phone. I guessed it. The inevitable has happened. My father was bedridden from Parkinson's disease. I knew something untoward had taken place. Obviously, my father had passed away. I went for the cremation. My father's body was lying on stage. A few family friends, a couple of relatives were all there talking a few good words about my father. It's quite amazing, you know, when you're born, people love you, and when you die, people love you. In between, you have to manage. It's quite funny. When you're born, hey, they'll do all that. And when someone dies, acha tha bechara. Are, beech mein bolna. Beech mein bolne mein mar gaya. Tu beech mein bolne mein talk something good about that person. They started talking about my father, all these good things and all of that. And then one member, who was the leader of the community I belonged to, and who also happened to be family, spoke a few words about my father, and then he said, he said, actually this man would have lived longer, but the cause of this man's death is a son. He called me the killer of my father. Did you hear that? Could there be an insult worse than that? That night when I went to my mom's house, even after years of my spiritual practice, I was tossing and turning as these words rang in my ears that I was the killer of my father. It was because of my, me that my father had died. Ladies and gentlemen, my mind was restless. My emotional state had been disturbed. And when your emotional state is disturbed, you can't sleep, you can't get anything out of life. Your experience of life is proportional to your emotional state. Therefore, William Blake said, the mind can make heaven out of hell or hell out of heaven. That night, as I tossed and turned, I remember one statement, my guru, Radhanath Swami, the author of The Journey Home, that if you can grab it, read it, beautiful book. He said, do not give the remote control of your emotions to someone else. 
that man, by what he was saying, was pressing a button on the remote control and making me feel trash. I depend on you to say that your talk was great and feel good, and I depend on you to say that my talk was bad and I feel trash. That means I've given the remote control to you. I feel good because you make me feel good. I feel bad because you make me feel bad. And how shallow is life that I don't have the guts to take the control of my emotions in my own hands. Ladies and gentlemen, we have to learn how to take the control of our feelings in our own hand. I, I will not allow any damned person under the sun to make me feel good or bad by what he or she says. If they say good, fine, that's good. Appreciation, nice, I'm happy with it. And even if they trash me, fine, it's their opinion. It's the way they think. Ladies and gentlemen, the trunk is our physical and our emotional stability, and I'm not getting into the physical well-being because of paucity of time, obviously. And the last one is the crown. The crown is our contribution to the world. The crown is where the fruits come. The crown is where the leaves come. The crown is where the flowers come. And the fruits are for others. The flowers are for others. The leaves are for others. The shade that the crown of the tree gives is for others. Our contribution to others. Sanskrit is an amazing language. Because in Sanskrit, if you want to call someone an ass or a donkey, you call him Vaishakhanandan. Now next time, if you want to call someone a donkey, say, hey, Vaishakhanandan. God, he'll think you're composing a poetry on him, I must tell you. I must tell you, you know. And Sanskrit is amazing because in Sanskrit, ice cream is called Dukdha Sharkara Yukta Hima Ghanagolagattu. Now, if you want to say mango ice cream, you would say Amra Dukdha Sharkara Yukta Hima Ghanagolagattu. And if you want to order it, God, to say Amra Dukdha Sharkara Yukta Hima Ghanagolagattu Anaya, by the time you order it, it will melt away, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know why I'm saying this? I'm saying this because people say that life is like an ice cream. You should enjoy it before it melts. It'll indeed melt away. I say life is like a candle. You should bring light to others before it melts. Both the ice cream melts and the candle melts. But the ideology behind the ice cream is selfish enjoyment. And the ideology behind the candle is selfless contribution. Selfless service to others and each of us in our own ways must learn how to contribute like the crown of the tree. I must end with this little thing that I want to say. This last one point I would like to mention is this. If you have ever been on a flight, the members of the cabin crew will come there and say, ladies and gentlemen, this is a seat belt, I know. This you have buckle it, I know. I know some pilots are sitting here, I must apologize. <laughs> Actually, you know, if there be a lack of oxygen supply in the cabin, oxygen masks will drop from the cabin above your heads. Secure your mask properly and breathe normally. Make sure your oxygen mask is secured properly before you help others. God, I thought this is the height of selfishness. But... If you don't keep yourself in place, you can't help others. If you don't have resources, you can't share your resources. If you don't feel love, you can't share love. If you don't feel hope, you can't give hope. If you don't feel uplifted, you can't uplift others. Therefore, be selfish first. Care for your roots. Care for your trunk. Because only when your roots and trunk are in place, then the crown can give others. How many of you look to like to look beautiful? Any of you like to look handsome? Those who are not raising their hands think they're already good looking. Anyway, that's another, that's another story of it. One lady came to class, teacher came to class and wrote on the whiteboard, I am beautiful. Which tense is it? The student says, past tense, madam. <laughs> you know. Our, our late, late president, Sri Abdul Kalamji, said a very nice thing which left a deep mark on me. He said, if you really want to look handsome, give your hand to some. And you will automatically look handsome. Because handsomeness is not about beauty and looks. It's about how we contribute to people. I conclude by saying, if you are beautiful, 
it's God's gift to you. If you live your life beautiful, it's your gift to God. And therefore, the tree of life is about three things. Roots, unseen to the world, deepen them by connection to the divine, connection to God, your spiritual practice, your meditation, your prayer. The trunk, which is about cultivation of emotional